How did hike? Welcome to the Bears post game show. Bears beat the Vikings sixteen to six. Who we brought to today by uh, Carl Miller Light. Great tasting, less filling, born in 1975, and the official beer of the Chicago Bears. Yeah, we'll be hanging out with Miller Lite this Sunday at Buffalo Wild Wings on Taylor Street to watch the game versus uh, the Raiders. So uh, come on out, Chief. You're going to be there? I will be there with fucking bells on. Dave? Why wouldn't I be there, Ed? Yeah, so all right. Miller Lite, go get yourself some 1975 less, more taste, less filling. Is that right, Carl? Yeah, I, I prefer the great taste, but I also do enjoy the fact that it's less filling but most importantly, the 96 cals. You keep it under 100 calories, you got my vote. It's basically Miller Lite. A, a health drink. Very much so, Dave, but not really. There we go. So where do you boys want to start? So here's, here's let me let me get this out there first, that this is one of, one of the best parts about this game was how much was that was stacked against us, okay? Two of our best players on defense, uh, we lose our quarterback on the first drive, a short week, and we just came out and we beat the fuck out of them. Beat our ass. I put that bet in bears minus four and a half like early in the week and then it was like oh shit Roquan's out oh shit Hicks is out and you watch the line just kind of move I think it was all the way down to one when the time kickoff was like and I'm like I am fucked wrong like that team showed up ready to fucking play it was awesome total team win it's good reverse line movement there yeah it was such a weird uh inactive list too because usually there was only one guy i think it was kevin tolliver who's usually mm-hmm. an inactive everyone else kyle long or keem hicks roquan mm-hmm. Smith, mike davis had a death in the family uh who, who am i missing here uh get taylor gabriel which yep. i've known for a while mm-hmm. because he had the concussion but it was just like the hits just kept coming and coming and uh i don't know if you guys want to start with the roquan stuff or do you want to get to the game first and then get to the maybe semi speculation we might as well start with the yeah. roquan okay. stuff because i feel like i know it was taking up some headspace with you last night because what was going on with like the lamborghini or how, i don't even know where you want to start with this one ed yeah, yeah. so uh roquan smith like phantom inactive out of nowhere about an hour and a half before game kick was at like 325 yep. around like 115 you find out that he's doubtful whoa you know originally like the hair stands up like what's going mm-hmm. on here uh it's kind of 15 minutes after that you find out that he's out um and then it's just you know everyone's scratching their heads you get a personal reason thrown at you yeah and, and still even after the game didn't have an update when we're recording at 8 30 this morning on monday still no real concrete updates there's just wild speculation of all kinds of different things going on but all pro caliber linebacker just nowhere to be found yeah and it's just and what it was what was funny about it was that it wasn't he was on the sidelines that doesn't usually happen. So what causes mm-hmm. a guy to miss a game, Ed? Obviously, if you can't play physically, and they'll tell you that. And yeah. then there's another reason that you can't. Because and it's disciplinary reasons. Yeah. So I don't like like I said, I'm done speculating. I wrote a blog last night. There was a little thread going around on Twitter that uh, he was in an accident and uh, you know he crashed a Ferrari. Turned out to be completely false. I re-updated I updated the blog and said that uh, I received a good tip from someone who's kind of in the know that it was complete bullshit. That wasn't Roquan's. So Ferrari. squash that rumor, Ed. Team rules? Because yeah. this just be a team rules situation where they're like, it's team rules and that's all you need to know about. But maybe it could be. I don't know if it was like, all right, he got caught like being out, like maybe the, you know, whatever. But don't you think they would say that, though, if it was a, a team rules that they would just be like, they, Nagy like reiterated like as a personal right, team matter. Team could right? be investigating right now whether or not he violated team rules and it could be Something strong like that, suspicion. Yeah. And sure. like, it could be like the agents like, yeah, well, you're not saying shit to the press until you. This is what sucks is there's so much stuff. Listen, my point is this. He's so good, he would be playing barring something big. Yeah. He's that good. Yeah, he's amazing. Like, that's where I said, like, I don't think it's – it's not out of bounds. It's not to say that two of our three best defenders were out. Like, no. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Like, not at all. I mean, I know, like, you know, there's obviously some contention there with, you know, maybe Eddie Jackson Eddie. or whatever. But, you know, all 11, whatever. It's, Points it, made. Right. It's, it's a worthy discussion. How about two exactly. of our four? Exactly. Yeah, sure. Right. So there we go. But regardless, uh, he was on the sideline, which you, you just don't see that. Mike Davis had a personal reasons, too. And it was, uh, it was, I think his father died. So he was gone. Obviously, he was taking care of something. Uh, you know, Mike Davis, hope you're doing all right. Hope everything's all right. But I think it's just, it was just really weird. And uh, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know what's going on because, like you said, Nagy, this isn't over because Nagy said this morning. And who knows? This is also a fluid situation where by the time you hear this show, something could break. But uh, Nagy said that he doesn't know his status for the Raiders game. I feel very bad about this. That scares the shit out of yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, so you don't want to speculate. I'm not speculating purely on emotion, though. 
I'm just saying this. I feel terrible about this. I don't. I don't. I don't feel great either. The more it goes, like keeps getting you know woven and well. I don't. I don't know what's. It's just. It's scary. Though. If it's bleeding week to week, he might have done something really stupid. And like I have no fucking clue what he did. I, I don't know if he was just out getting you know. No one knows. Dave. It. That's no. the point. Yeah. We don't so, know. but going from week to week, that means. It was Nagy's willing to up talk up. about his availability, right. availability for next week smells awful. That's yeah. stinks he's like the just high putting heavens. a little he's just floating a little feeler out there that like, yeah, it's probably not gonna play. Yeah, we're working through this. We're hope, we're hoping that he's available for the Oakland game. Can I ask Chief how he feels about the replacement play of quite <laughs> oh, hold on, Dave. Without breaking eye contact with me, Dave, I mm-hmm. want you to spell Kwiatkowski. K W I A T K O W S-K-I. Fuck yeah, David. I got it. Let's, go. Go. Let's have a fucking week, yeah. boys. Let's have a week. And I want to talk other? about this motherfucker. So I had a dog shit week. Everybody knows it. You know, I fucked up the blog last week. Radio, chaining <laughs> statues, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've said this since day one, since they drafted him. Since, and you can't stink at linebacker in Chicago with the last name Kwiatkowski. It just doesn't work like that. You have to be a stud. Mm-hmm. And... I said, so he he was like chasing a ball carrier into the flat yesterday and like kind of push him out of bounds. It was a kind of nothing play. But like it, he is so fucking slow and I tweeted it. And of course, just because God hates my guts and, and, the, and like <laughs> karma is just smacking me in the face nonstop. He had the game of his fucking life. Probably, right? He, he really did. did. Go back he had the yeah. best game. He'll him, never have a better game than that. Yeah. So of course, everyone's like, you fucking loser. Like you can't do anything right. I'm like, I will stand by it. Here's he the stinks. Deal. He doesn't stink. He's, I mean, a, he's he, a smart player. He's, he's just, a backup linebacker. He's a backup linebacker. I think <laughs> not, he's if, his, if his hey, last name was hey, Smith. Hold on. Hey. Hold on. He, he's an old soul. That's all he That's is. right. He's okay. playing in the wrong era. Yeah. Yes. It, he would be the perfect right. guy. I don't know. Like like a single terror. You just play For downhill sure. and smash your heads into right. guards and Absolutely. fullbacks and totally. make tackles. Like mm-hmm. That's who he is. That's who he was born to be. With He's a hammerhead. Right. That's what exactly. we've always said. He just he, like he can play in like a six-yard area, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So having said that, he, you're right. He did have the game of his life yesterday. I, I, that was the one matchup when Roquan was out where I was like, you're we concerned. are fucked because right. of Dalvin Cook. Like I, I was having like flashes of. But why him. though? He's a two down back. So you say that but the game's so not. You say the game's not made out for him anymore. I think it is. It's just made for him on first and second down to stuff up the run. And then they're bringing in a, Kevin Pierre Lewis, Chuck mm-hmm. Pagano, nice little fucking nice personnel call right yeah, there. Definitely. Someone who could play the pass. Yep. The Bears played it perfectly. They were. They it's, did. It's, I don't know. Maybe they knew that. Like uh, how much tip off did they have that this was going to happen? So I don't know. Deion Bush came in and he had some packages mm-hmm. where it seemed like that might be a Roquan package. Normally, Deion Bush was ready yeah. to slide in there. So that that's actually not a bad wow. observation. Yeah, I'm there. over here. I, yep. Yeah. So they might have that. Mm, you said you were done speculating. Maybe you <laughs> it were. Sounds like <laughs> Ed, that was really well yeah. Yeah. I mean, speculated. I'll be yeah. honest. They did a Pagano did a great personnel I, day. I, he really did, and I kind of noticed that too. Where it was like, <laughs> ooh, ooh, Deion Bush is in there in certain packages where it was like. Where that would normally just be nickel with Roquan, mm-hmm. they kind of went to a dime look, and I, I assume that they kind of made it on the fly. But Dion Bush was kind of in that spot. So Ed, speculation, Ed. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. So listen, yeah. it was a Nick day. I don't know if you watched my it post game. Was it was a big day. Nick yeah. day. Nick, Dave's talking about Nick Kwiatkowski. Nick Williams comes in, yeah. filling in for Akeem Hicks. Two sacks. Unbelievable. The defense fucks, man. It's just it was. It kind of reminded me of the uh, Rams game last year, mm-hmm. where they where they just completely shut down what was the best team in football at the time. They absolutely dominated that game. Dominated, yeah, dominated. It was never, it was never in doubt. I don't care. Like they scored that touchdown, mm-hmm. and like they could have won that game seven to six. I know they moved the ball a little bit, but they that that defense terrorized Kirk Cousins the entire game. What do you and think Dalvin he's Cook, feeling this back morning? Back to Nick Kwiatkowski when he fucking blows up. And <laughs> like he almost sacked I know. That was Kirk like Cousins favorite. with um That was like my Dalvin favorite play of the game. Yeah, he just awesome. completely blew him up. Smoked him. Domination. So yeah, but uh and and I will say this, Chase Daniels. That like Daniel he, Daniel. Daniel Daniels Daniel whatever the fuck his last name yesterday. is. Is <laughs> this um, a transition period of the offense? I mean, I want to give him a little quick shout out because well, we're, <laughs> we're going to spend a lot of time on. We're probably yeah. going to spend a lot of time on quarterback yeah. play. Can I ask you this though? Are the Vikings good? I don't think we know yet. I think the defense they is. look and smell like an eight and eight, nine and seven. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm I think a, you take your wins though, right? Are we still no, at that point with the bear? No. Okay. No. 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 Hold on a second. You're right. I'm not answering the question. I'm just. I'm. I am gravitating more towards 
the natural ed where it's like you got to get your wins and move on. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And they're they're good enough. Like they're not bad, but are they good? I just don't know if they're good. And Detroit looks pretty decent. Yeah, so far four games. Is that out. Matt Patricia? It's it's easily the best division in football. There's not a bad team. There's not a team where you're like, oh, well, thank God we got, you know, the Jets or Bills, like, mm-hmm. or not the Bills, rather, the Dolphins. And, like, we know we have two wins on the schedule down the road. Every wow. fucking divisional game is going to be a the war. The lines look yeah. really good, too, right now. That's exactly yeah, what we, I said, dude. Yeah, we, we're <laughs> uh, thank you for paying attention. <laughs> no, uh, but regardless, I, but everyone's shitting on Kirk. And listen, he deserves his flag for ball security, amongst other things. But I mean, the, what, at what point does the onus fall on the offensive line? Like the guy was getting mauled the whole yeah. game. He's been around too, right? I mean, you're not talking about a rookie quarterback. So I feel like when you are able to fuck somebody up as badly as you are with Kirk Cousins, it's not like he hasn't been under pressure game after game after game in his career. So, like, the fact they sacked him six times and stuff, yeah, and I don't know if that says less about the offensive line or more about the pressure. I don't I th- know. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I just think the Bears, like, even got, like you said, Nick Williams, he had a monster game. Roy mm-hmm. Robertson Harris is a mm-hmm. fucking awesome. beast, too. Awesome. And it's almost like. That guy's contract. And I feel like yeah. I saw you say a tweet like, "Oh, no one's talking." I feel like I bang that drum. Good you enough. do, you, you do, do. Yeah. yeah. You're, but you're the only one. Yeah. I feel I. I look at that guy as like an awesome, awesome. Like he should be a starter. He's like good. he's he's good he enough is. to be a starter on most teams. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he's gonna get paid this off season. Yeah. So if someone's gonna pick him up. Like he'll be gone. He's turned into an awesome player. He's what, good. What's Pagano doing, Ed? Like, what exactly is different between him and Vangio? Or Fangio? Are you seeing? You know what? He seemed. He just. I don't know the difference. The, the, per se between him and Fangio, but he just the 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 packages he brought in, like I said, the personnel, like what I alluded to, he just kind of has these guys ready, it seems. I mean, look at that. Sixteen uh points is the most they've given up so far. And how like, much do those guys like playing for him? I mean it looks like they're having fun, right? Right? I think it looks like they're having a lot of fun. I mean eleven points per game against through the first four games of the season, mm-hmm. and that's a lot better than the eighty five team. I think it's better by about five or six points yeah. or something. So it's uh the defense, needless to say, like I is this not like the most typical Bears team as we transfer over to offense. Is it more here. painful though because they can win a Super Bowl? <sighs> yeah, I mean, I see. I don't I, know. I, we're I not, felt no pain yesterday. Like you were like never nervous. I I just I had so much fun watching that. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. You think that yeah. team could beat? You think that team could beat Dallas in a playoff game? I do. Yeah, I, I, the defense I is that good. They're never gonna get like they're never gonna be out of a game because that mm-hmm. defense is just so fucking good. So I look at I don't know like Dallas is awesome, sure. But I, I, I don't. I think the Bears in like on any given Sunday because the the defense make can make so many plays and ruin games for people that I think that they're like this team could the sky is still the limit. Like we were all panicking after week one. Right here we are week yeah. after week four tied for first mm-hmm. place. So this and it's on the strength of defense and that's never going to change. So I yeah. had fun yesterday. Oh yeah, and it's just with just the quarterback getting knocked out, a little bit of a QB controversy, a little bit. I say that lightly. Uh, and just the awesome defense. It's just it really does feel like the mid 2000s I said now. yesterday I think I'm kind of in on Chase. Get out of here. Come but on. But you're not really though. I mean, I'm not really in on Chase. Yeah. But I was seeing, you know, I don't think anybody who watched the game yesterday saw the ball move differently. Yeah. The tempo and, like, the rhythm of the offense was glaringly different, I which got, is a bad sign. That's what I happens got, when you're able to make a fucking throw downfield. I got a comment. So that last show on Red, Share Line, it. Red Line Radio, we asked Dave what he would be like if he was, like, six, you know, six one, full head of hair or whatever. <laughs> He might look a lot like Chase Daniels. <laughs> it looks like he drinks a lot of milk. He's kind of stocky. <laughs> he's not like in the best shape, but he's a good athlete. Like you're like you should be all over. Can read Chase a defense. Daniels. Yeah. Look a safety yeah. off. Right. Like he's like he would. Lo- I feel like <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. the, the first play, yeah. like the first uh, one of the first passes he had last night, he had like a double pump fake. You love that. I, I was like rock hard. <laughs> I was rock hard. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that double pump fake. He had That's all day to throw football right. like early. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but does do we do we still win that game of Mitch plays? I don't know. How many yeah, turnovers I mean, did Chase have? Yeah. Zero. The, I don't like this hypothetical. I don't want to talk. No, about what this. do you mean? I think he scores more than six points. I think we still win. I, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I think we still win, but I, the, yeah. the offense looked different. And like I had, sure. Well, what do you think? Though? Well, it really stalled out there. You know, that first drive, he kind of lit it up in the first half. The second half, it kind of did look like it stalled out a little bit. But at the end of the day, if Trubisky isn't getting reps, it's not good for the Bears. Sure, it's just not good. I do have a like, quote from Anthony Miller, though. Read it. So he said he's a general. 
out there. He knows exactly where the ball is supposed to go, and he reads it correctly. We had a lot of confidence in him. So that just is just like I think you're reading he, too much into this. No, I don't think the skill think guys so. would much rather play I, with. Exactly. Chase. So you're saying that Miller is like throwing shade? I agree with Dave. But what? continue. You think I'm, I'm reading too much into that? Yeah. See, I think if you're a, a wide receiver, here's the difference, all right? I think Daniel knows where to go with, go with the ball beforehand, and it's like a timing thing. I think Mitch has to be like, okay, there he is. He's open. He has the arm strength to like kind of make up the difference for being mm-hmm. late on the read, and it's not quite as accurate. I think Daniel has the ability to throw people open, and the timing works better. Like The offense just like it did stall out, but it popped, and like they played fast, and it just looked like a little better to me. Uh, slightly better, and it's like if you could take Chase Daniels' brain and put it right. in uh, Trubisky's body, you'd have an All-Pro quarterback. But don't you think that the Vikings were prepared to play Mitch Trubisky? Like, don't you think if like, and that's a concern here. How is different we it- saw this. We kind of saw this with Chase Daniel last year. He played well against the Lions. Well, he played well enough to win, and then he came back in that second week. He got his doors blown off by the Giants. Yeah, because you know, the Giants and the Giants just bring a bunch of pressure, and they, they just a, fucked with them. And then yeah. it didn't seem like the Vikings. You're right because you don't bring the house against Mitch because that's when Mitch fucks you up. They had a week of tape on him, yeah. and I think that's a big thing with backup quarterbacks is you're mm-hmm. just not prepared. Like the well, game plan is not there, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm concerned going into. Oh, sure, yeah. I don't think anyone's like thrilled with having yeah. Chase Daniels your starting quarterback. No team would. You but, you but, absolutely did just sound like you were thrilled. No, no, no. I but I'm also not. Th- I don't. That's think, what I'm saying. You you were that guy. I don't think the gap between Trubisky and Chase Daniel is like. Oh my god. And so what I think Ed's point do? is like actually the gap should be bigger next week because you're you're reacting off of this week. I don't think the game plan between and Nagy said as much between what they went into preparing with Mitch and what they're going to do with Daniel is that different. Like it's going to be, see, I disagree. You disagree with the head coach. You said they ran the same place. Like they do a little, they ran things a little bit quickly. They let the clock run out. So they had more ball control. It was the exact same game plan. That's what Nagy said after the game. He's like, I mean, yeah, of course Nagy's going to say that dude, like you're Mr. Press conference over here. Like, Oh, Nagy said that to the media. So that's what happened. Like you think Matt, you think Matt Nagy's calling the same. All right. Then you tell me what's going to look different with Mitch versus with, Chase Daniel. Well, probably a lot this. less option, right? A lot less RPO. Well, that would be my guess. Probably not. Keep going. Okay. I would guess that, and I would guess a lot more quicker throws. Yeah. With, with like a lot over, like middle dumper shorters. Which is a good thing. Sure. I think that's and a good thing. Not that th- but I just don't think that's what you do with Mitch. I don't know. It's because Mitch doesn't read it quick enough. It's still the same game plan. It's still the same plays. They're still running RPOs. They're still doing all that Did shit. you like when Chase Daniel ran for that first down? <laughs> I made me nervous because then Tariq Cohen would have to come in as the quarterback. Yeah. What was that? Oh, they're probably going to call the same place if they didn't can we, too, right? Can you guys at least? Yeah. Can you guys at least come home with me on one thing that you're tired of the fucking Wildcat Cordero Patterson thing? Yeah, yeah. Hey, please, uh, I, like, yeah. please, like, come home to me a little bit here. I'm home, dude. Daddy's he, home, man. He's, he's like the fastest player in fucking football, yeah. but he can like he has no vision yeah. whatsoever. Dave, I love that motherfucker as a gunner. He made some awesome. Yeah. Fucking he's a great panels. special teams guy. Yeah, yeah. on the punt team. But get that it. fucking shit out of here. That third and two, it honestly yeah. kills me to watch that. Like I, you just sit there, you look up, and you're like, here we fucking go. Mm-hmm. And I think that's everybody's reaction. Yeah. Stop that. I yeah. bet you know stop what? that. Shit. I wouldn't be surprised if that shit is stopped because it's <laughs> wait, like moving forward, moving forward. Yeah. Like I bet you, Neg is like, no, the show? fuck this. <laughs> no, not because of the show, because it oh. plays like the Wildcat bullshit that he's doing just has been so bad. They, they like have no other option than to just like dump it, like get it the fuck out of the playbook. They have the one player that's worked with him this year, which was that sweep against Denver. And that was it. I don't yeah. mind getting him in space, but stop the up the middle bullshit. Like he, he, he can't read a block. He can't read holes or anything. It's also counter to just the bears playing at soldier field to have a guy as fast as he is. I'm watching the game on TV and it just seems like they're in quicksand at soldier. Field. Well, the was it turf did, did yesterday? Stinks. I know, but it seemed like yesterday was even worse. I know that the, I had a tough time. I'm deciphering that uh, Tariq Cohen play where he had a, you know, white hair was right in front of him. It looked like they might have tangled feet a little bit, but I was just convinced. Like, you initially see that off the jump. You're like, that's the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Like, we're going to lose, like, big time chunk plays because of the field. Exactly. And so the fact bad. that Nagy's offense is so, like, spread in space yeah. and match up, and it's like, oh, by the way, we play on sand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, credit to Nagy too. Uh, I thought he called a good game. Yeah, uh, wasn't afraid to pull those challenges. Mm-hmm. Uh, two big challenges in the first half. Uh, the first one with uh, an awesome job by Prince of Mukamura to fucking get that peanut <laughs> was, punch on Stefan yeah. Diggs. What did you guys think of? It? I don't. I don't think I would have 
they called it incomplete and they overturned it, correct? That's how it worked. What, the I Stephon think, Diggs one? Yeah, yeah, I don't think... I thought yeah. he made a football move. Yeah, I thought yeah. so, too. It was so razor thin. It was close, thin. yeah. But he brought the ball to his body and took a step. Like, to me, like, I, who mm-hmm. fucking knows what the rules are anymore? But I was, that, you know what? I shouldn't say this. I should say I'm really surprised that they overturned it. Because, like, inconclusive right, and yeah. it was called incomplete on the field. But, um, but to Ed's point, Nagy... That's like the best he like the best he's looked. I'll say it like that. Like he's a player all all fucking year so far. Yeah, and I think he you know he's really improved since week one. Mm-hmm. We talked Absolutely. about it so many times where it's like week we're one was so weird. So what weird happened in yeah. week one? They got cocky, I think. But like, like even like yeah. the, even though they were in hurry up, they still let the play clock wind down, and they like dominated time of possession. They were moving the sticks. The drives ended in field goals, like whatever. But they kept the defense fresh, and I think he mm-hmm. like he knows it's like this team is the defensive team. The offense just has to kind of like keep their head above water and support him. And it's just like, and he he's playing to their to his strengths now. And right. I think that's great to see. Yeah, and uh, another thing that defensive that sec- the Vikings had two possessions in the second in the second uh, yeah. the first half. Sorry, yeah. did you know that? Yeah, that's wild. The yeah, Bears it's never fucking crazy. That's wild. Yeah. Didn't have the ball. It seemed yeah. like. And the, yeah. I mean, the Vikings just had that long drive, and that mm-hmm. one the second drive. It was just like the drive from hell. Their best play was Eddie Jackson getting flagged for that a personal it. fucking yeah. foul in the end zone. Yeah. That was unbelievable. But yeah, I mean, it was a. Uh, we we needed that though. We needed that because you know we we kind of escaped Denver. I feel mm-hmm. like you just like we literally escaped. Like we, yep. we stole over Ed. there, and then we beat a really bad team. Pretty evident by you know the Giants putting a beat down on the Redskins. Yeah. It was. I, I know. I just asked if are the Vikings any good or I, I don't think they're bad, but they're somewhere in between. This was a nice one. They're better Ed. than the Raiders. Yeah. Where are you at on the red line? Uh, I don't answer that question. They're better than the Raiders, right? <laughs> or the Vikings? Uh, the Vikings? I would say so, I but the, so. the Raiders don't look terrible. I'm not man. saying the Raiders look terrible. I'm just saying, like, now that we're in we're in week fucking five now, yeah. we got the Raiders staring us down. Four and one's huge, right? Hey, any big. gambler knows the difference between four and one and three and two. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. big. It's big, and it's in London, neutral site. Uh, it's going to be a night game there. It's going to be a noon game here. It's going to that'll be so, cool visual. Yeah, uh-huh. so it's going to be cool. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. We got to. We got to escape with the win. You Have we left for London already? I don't. I was wondering that. Like, when do they? When are they going to leave? Because I thought the Raiders left after their game. Did they? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I would feel like that wouldn't be great though. Because the I Raiders mean, were talking about how Vontez Burfecht isn't going to come with them. Because Vontez Burfecht. Yeah. Yeah. Did you right. see the hit he had on John country. Doyle? Yeah. They, I mean, they were already on the road though, right? Weren't they in Indy? So the, the Raiders? Yeah. I don't know where they were. They I think were. they were in Indy. Yeah. One That's out, tough. Right? You know, the yeah. Packer? Who's the Packer on that? You know, like the team guy who, you know, he's got <laughs> to worry about all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I would hate that. That's like a Would fort- you? I mean, yeah. But you would also like that job because you're like, yeah, I'm the official team Packer guy. Yeah, I don't know. I got that's eight a lot big of, trips a year. That's a lot of loading <laughs> box trucks, man. I don't yeah. know if that's Yeah, for but me. at that point, you're just, okay, you don't want to be the guy carrying the box, <laughs> but if you're standing there at the clipboard and everybody else is carrying the boxes, Ed. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'd be, I could like point out where the boxes are. How about that? Yeah. Like, I, I'll organize. <laughs> hey, if you're going to the London yeah. game, uh, send us some videos or yeah. send us your content that you're out there. If you see anything, like, for, for sure. sure, make sure you guys are sending us stuff on, on uh, Redline Radio. Video, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, it'd be fun. And then lastly, I want to shout out Eddie Pinero. The guy, like, I don't know if he can walk. Like, I'm pretty sure after he kicks field goal, they all lift him up like Byron Leftwich and they put him on yeah. like a wheelchair. <laughs> like, the guy is clearly in pain still. Yeah. And he's just drilling him. Not really. <laughs> Does that make you? Well, it was three for three, made his extra point. Like, yeah, he's yeah. just drilling. I mean, yeah. I know like there was nothing like crazy. No, no fifty yards. They're all crazy. Like yeah, they're all crazy. That's true. Yes. After last year, they're all crazy. Dude, he blasted a thirty-eight yards. yarder right down Broadway, and I'm sitting there thinking, God damn, from forty-three last year, and we're going to New Orleans, and we got a playoff game, and we're having a blast. I don't sweat. I don't like at all. No, like no. Now you don't even think about it. It's crazy. You just like assume it's going to be good. It's crazy. I kind of yeah. do like the fact he's got that fucked up leg too. <laughs> you know, because he's got to focus a little bit more. <laughs> you know, he can't go yeah. out there and just try and blast it. He's like, like man, I've really got to try on this yeah. one. He doesn't go home and think about, like, what game video game he's going to play. He thinks about how much his leg's in he's pain. He's just icing his leg. And That's his it. legs <laughs> thinks of him as his job and how he has to kick field goals. He's a real football guy. Sure. Yeah, yeah he's a real football guy. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So now, as far as Eddie De Niro is concerned, Eddie De Niro is concerned, like, do you, are you more or less satisfied than you would hope hope you'd be feeling about our kicker situation? Like even though he is injured, more, even, yeah, more. I know it's talking about it. There's no like either when he runs out there. There's no every fucking beat reporter rushes to their phone to tweet and Eddie Pinero gets ready to kick yeah. a forty three yarder. Like there's none of that. How long does that last? 
I think it the, he, that fifty two yarder in Denver. I think that's yeah. when it lasted. Yeah. That's yeah. when it died. Yeah, that's good from sixty eight. Yeah. And guess what? He's gonna miss. He's probably gonna miss this week. Now that we've had this conversation, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. He's earned the benefit of the doubt right now. Yeah. Did you by saying he's probably gonna miss this week reverse the fact that he's probably gonna miss this week? I don't know. Okay, maybe I did. I maybe I did a little reverse. Let's sit down mush. with a pad and paper and work through yes. that when we're done. I covered my ass, but as well as reverse <laughs> jinxed it. So I feel yeah. good about that. So, all right. Is is Mitch going to miss this week? Do we think? Yeah, I, okay. I don't see him playing. Right? I mean, who knows? But I, I don't, we have, we know nothing right now. Yeah. You can't player. set that total low enough in games Mitch doesn't play. Yeah. As soon as I was like, "Oh, Mitch is out," just went right over to the live well, action site and this, pounded that under. <laughs> this isn't a bad time for him to be out either because they go Raiders by Saints with Teddy Bridgewater. It's not like right. you know. I, I, don't know. I feel like the Bears are they are in a good spot here. I'm Very good, pretty spot. good. Very good spot. Uh, just got to keep racking them. It could be in a very bad spot, though, if we lose this week. So I just, if you Khalil Mack revenge game, we're uh, not going to lose this week. It's true. Yeah. Good true. luck. And we're going to talk about that probably in our second show yeah. on Thursday. But that's that's going to be a lot of fucking Gruden. Khalil Can we look at just for a second? So we have Raiders. We have Saints. Saints. We have Chargers. Chargers. And When's then, the bye? Is it after It's this after week? the Raider game. Yeah. So Raiders, bye. bye. Saints. Saints, Chargers. Both of those games are at home. Yes. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Then we're on the road at Philly. That's what's nice about the uh about the at least the Saints game is that we, we don't play them in the dome. Oh man. You know, so that's God could you, I really I hate to look ahead like this, but if we're if we have one loss heading into having Philip uh Philip Rivers and Melvin Gordon in here. Ugh. That's yeah. be huge. And Justin yeah. Jackson. Be huge. Yeah. <laughs> he he got hurt. Said, yeah, he got hurt. Yeah, he got hurt. What else? But uh, no, that's it, guys. I think uh, it's it's a happy Bears Monday. Mm-hmm. It's, it's great to see you guys. Everyone's a little happier today. Yeah. So uh, that that's always a good thing. And the uniforms looked okay too. Yeah, I like the uniforms. Yeah. I, I did. I didn't like the helmets. Didn't like the socks, but. I did like the jerseys. Didn't like the socks. Yeah, and we'd be remiss not to say goodbye to Joe Manning. Yeah, so we just got to say Joe Manning got fired. Well, okay. I was at the tailgate. Yeah. Someone's like, yo, you hear Joe Manning fired. And like I said, something we will definitely have more on on our Thursday episode. So, so tune into sure, that. Yeah, be sure to check that out. Without further ado, let's kick it over to Gas Money Bob to hear how we did in week four against the Washington Redskins in 1985. Whoosh. 